The Old Testament reading today is Exodus 21 to 17, and that is the Ten Commandments. As God laid these out, our Bible study in great detail about this, we can. But for this, just here as I read once again these very familiar passage, God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath it or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them nor worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their parents for the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that's in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. (sighs) Ten Commandments. Who never heard that before? We'll get back to that in a bit. The New Testament passage comes from Matthew in 18, starting at verse 21, talking about love, believe it or not. Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Good number. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all had to be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and left him go. But then the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged, Be patient with me. I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told the master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servants in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, the master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. And then Jesus says, This is how my heavenly Father will treat each one of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Sounds like pretty strong words. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I've started my sermon before I finish the text. If somebody owed you $16,000, what would you do? $16,000. Start harassing phone calls. Start going by their house and get a gun. (laughs) Threaten him. Take him to court. What if he couldn't pay? Would you seize his property? $16,000. What would you do? 
Today is a story of forgiveness and perspective. Looking at things in perspective is where this passage comes through. The Old Testament passage is the famous Ten Commandments. <laughs> famous because we love to talk about them. We just don't want to live them out. We're very important to us that they are on display at the courthouse. But I venture to say most people couldn't tell me what the Ten Commandments are without reading them. And that thing about Sabbath rest and not doing any work on the Sabbath? We love to talk about it, we just don't like to keep them. We like to pick and choose which commandments we think are important. So we can point our finger at somebody else if they're not doing one thing. In the meantime, you know, Paul said something about that. He says, if you're under the commandments, you break one commandment, you've broken the entire law. If you've broken any one of the laws, you've broken the whole thing. The sermon today's title is The Greatest Commandment. And that was alluded to during the jam time. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said it himself. Here is the greatest commandment. The second one is like it. Love God, love your neighbor. This Sunday, it's about forgiveness. And I'm going to posit to you the idea that it's all the same thing. It's like a spiritual circulation system. If one part gets messed up, the rest gets messed up. It's all affected. The Ten Commandments, three of them relate specifically to God. By loving God, you place God before everything else. There was no other God before me. It's funny because modern vernacular says, in my face. You're in my face. Get out of my face. That's literally what it says. No other God, nefesh. No other God's in my face. In their world, their whole ancient world, everybody had a, a master god, the biggest big cheese, but he always had a consort. He always had another god, which is like his female, his counterpart. And them and the multitude of gods created everything. God says, no, 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 no. I did it. I myself. There's no other gods before me. No other, no other thing, no idol, nothing you can put. Whether you make an idol, an image of it, or, or create it in your mind. Wealth, power, love, family, nothing be in front of me. Don't take my name in vain. OMG. How many times? I hope you don't do that. How many times does the text come across? What does that stand for? Are you reverencing God's name with that? Or are you just kind of throwing it around? I said, don't do this. This name is holy. If you love me, that means you will respect me. You will not throw my name through the mud. You will not trash my name by using it when you're angry or surprised or any way but reverent. You know, the fourth thing is actually is for us. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. God says this is a gift to you. Six days of the week, work your tail off. I don't care. Just go for it. But one day out of the week, you pick if you want to, one day out of the week, you chill out and remember what a gift this is to you to recover, to sharpen the axe, to restore yourself, to reboot your computer mentally if you have to. But then the rest of them are all relating to society, how you treat other people, your parents, your neighbor. This is, if you love me, you will keep these. Love the Lord, love your neighbor. And love yourself. Be nice to yourself. Curious thing, though. Which one of those Ten Commandments, all or nothing, are our commandments? Anybody take a guess? Zero. Those are not our commandments. The laws in the Old Testament were written for the Jewish people in Israel. They're not our laws. Paul says, we don't live by the law anymore. That's not for us. They couldn't keep the laws. We can't keep the laws. There's a new covenant. If the old covenant had lasted, had been perfect, there wouldn't be a need for a new covenant. So none of those laws, those commandments, are our commandments. So here's the rub. What part of the Old Testament has to do with us? What laws actually are ours? None. What part of the Old Testament should we obey because they're there? All of them. Why? Words express thoughts, right? 
If I have something I want to express to you, I can't just telepathy put it out there. I got to put it into words. We call this the Word of God. This is God's thoughts put down in words. It's the same God in the Old Testament as the New. His same intention, His same thoughts. His desire is that we would honor Him. His desire is that we'd have nothing before Him. His desire is that we would honor our parents. But it's not a law. We know the heart of God through this. So what is God calling for? What is the kingdom of heaven like? How do we understand this? There's like nothing we know. There's no way for us to understand. So what Jesus has to do is say the kingdom of God is like. And how many times have you heard that in the Bible? We talked about it at a Bible study. I went to uh, Nave's topical Bible. So it's a fun tool to have. How many times has Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven? He likened it to a man sowing good seed, to a grain of mustard seed, to leaven, to a treasure, to a pearl, to a net, to the king who called his servants to give a reckoning, today's passage, to a householder, to the king who had a marriage feast for his son, to ten virgins, to a man traveling into a far country. Eleven times. Jesus, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. We fall into this trap of thinking, he's talking about when we cross over Beulah land and when we cross the Jordan and Jesus comes back for the final and we get to heaven, what's it like? The kingdom of heaven is like this. We think it's all futuristic. But if you look at them, you realize many of those passages talk about here and now. The one we're talking about today is talking about the here and now of the kingdom and forgiveness. How many times? Seven times? The rabbis used to debate this. How many times do you forgive somebody? You ever heard the three-strike rule? <laughs> I used to live by that for the longest time. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Third time, you were done. Three strikes and you're out. We just go our separate ways. How often do you forgive someone? The rabbi said seven's a perfect number. It's a complete number. You should forgive somebody seven times. So Peter brings this question to his rabbi, Jesus. How many times should we forgive someone? He says seven no. 77 times. Some translations is 70 times seven times. The point is, so many times you're going to lose count. How often do you forgive a brother or a sister? And he says, to tell you what, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Now, he's talking about future kingdom because listen to what he's talking about here. Ten thousand talents is what the first guy owed. So the king calls for account. Now you know if the guy owes ten thousand talents, he's got to be a pretty high up there serving, living well. A talent is about a year's wage. Okay, figure out if you make seventy thousand dollars a year, just a ballpark figure, that's seven hundred million dollars that you owe your boss. <laughs> 70,000 a year, that's not a huge income. If, if you got a 10,000 talents, you owe $700 million. And you're called to account. And you're begging for mercy. I will, do my, I will pay you back. I promise I will. You know, God, the, the boss says, you know, okay. First off, the boss must have a lot of money. If he can absorb $700 million and say, it's okay, I'll let you go. Don't worry about it that he has a huge amount of money, right? Resources. So the guy has $700 million debt been excused. He goes out and he finds a guy that owes him 100 denarii. A denarii is a day's wage. Let's say you make $20 an hour. Eight-hour day, that's $160, 100 denarii. Guy owes you $16,000. What would you do if somebody owed you $16,000? You might consider taking them to court. You might consider all these different things. But what if you just got relieved of a $700 million debt and you come across someone who owns you $16,000? Kingdom of heaven is like this, Jesus says. Of course, it has nothing to do with money. That's all earthly stuff. When he says the kingdom of heaven, he's not talking about earthly stuff. He's talking about spiritual things. He's saying, look, I'm the king. My father's the king. 
You owe him $700 million worth of debt because of the sin that you do. Because of the way that you, the debt you owe him, you couldn't repay in a hundred lifetimes. And yet one of his other servants owes you a piddling amount. 16000 compared to $700 million. And you're not going to forgive that person. Think about who you have a grudge with. Oh, I'm not saying you want to send them anthrax through the mail or shoot them down. You just don't like this person, so you're holding this grudge again. There's something they do in church that just annoys you, and you're not willing to let it go. There's someone in your family did you something back to you a while back, and third strike, you're out, that's done. You refuse to forgive. We say this every time we say the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debt as we forgive those who trespass against us, sin against us, our debtors. And Jesus went on to say, if you don't forgive the people who offended you, then their Father will not forgive you. So what right do you have to hold on to any grudge, any bit of anger, any hatred for another brother and sister specifically? I'm not talking about the whole world. We can discuss the world later, which, by the way, Jesus says, love your enemy. But right now, we're talking about brothers and sisters in Christ. If you've got anything you're refusing to let go of, you better have some serious heart-to-heart with God because God's been very specific about what the kingdom of heaven is like, and that's this real earth time. Forgiveness. Because there will come a time when... Accounts are called. Then it's too late. Now in this life. The other parables. The kingdom of heaven is like a sower who went and sowed seed. That's about this time, earth time, real time now. It's like a mustard seed who grow and grow. He's talking about the kingdom of God here on earth growing from him and three intimate disciples and 12 disciples to the entire Roman world in one generation. The mustard seed. Like leaven that leaveneth the whole lump. That's this time. Treasure you find and you sell everything to get it. A majestic pearl. That's talking about life in this kingdom right now. The household who brings out the good things. He's not that talking about Beulah land. He's talking about now. These are all real earth time. Kingdom of heaven is like. We are living in what they call the now and the not yet. We are living right now in the kingdom of heaven. We are engaged to God, Jesus Christ, as our husband. He's coming back for us one day. Right now is the kingdom of heaven that we are living in. And all of those parables, the kingdom of heaven is like what's happening on earth now. There are passages that talk about the kingdom of heaven later, what it's going to be like, but this is real-time earth. How do you forgive compared to how you're forgiven? Do you have trouble letting go of someone who owes you? (laughs) It's just something sticks in your craw. It's a burr in your saddle, all the different ways we have of saying it. You just can't let it go. I'm not joking. Come see me. We'll talk about it for an hour or so. Sometimes just getting it off your chest is helpful. I can kind of help you. I've actually been trained for this, believe it or not, to help you get started. Now, do I want you to step in my office for an hour and say, okay, thank you, Pastor, I forgive this person, and you're lying to me? No. Sometimes if it's been decades in the process or it's just so deep, you don't let it go in 60 minutes. We used to come across this a lot in the prison ministry where especially the women who have been abused all of their life by family members, and they get out of jail, and they've come to Christ, and now they're supposed to forgive and forget and go back to that same relationship where they were being abused before. We said, look, don't be stupid. You don't get amnesia. You forgive and you move on. Do you put yourself in that same position again to be abused again? No. If you know going home is going to get you violated in many different ways, then when you go home, you don't stay home at nighttime. You forgive, but don't be dumb. 
If somebody owes me a hundred bucks and they say they can't pay it, you know, okay, I'll let you go on that. They borrow a hundred bucks again and they don't pay it back. All right, you know, I'll let you go. Can I get you a hundred bucks from you? It's like, you know what? No. I don't hate you. I'm not praying a curse on you. It's not like I don't like you. You know, it's just, no. I'm not stupid. You don't pay your debt. I love you. Wish good things for you. I hope I see you in heaven. But no. I'm not going to subject myself to stupidity and be a doormat for you in the name of Jesus Christ. You show me something. You show me where you're, you're going back to school and you got a job and you really have prospects. Then we'll talk about, yeah, okay, maybe there's something different in your life. And yeah, I'll love you, love you some more. I'll take a chance on you again. The difference there is, are you willing to forgive or will you not forgive? And we get this a lot. We got this a lot. I know what that person did for me, and I will never forgive them for it. You just closed the door. You said, I will never forgive that person. Scripture says God will not forgive you. You know, honest preacher, I want to forgive them. I'm not there yet. I know in my heart I'm supposed to, and I'll work on it. I'm not there yet. Thank you. That's an honest answer. Don't just tell me what I want to hear. I know I need to forgive that person. I want to forgive that person. I'm not there yet. I can't do it just now. Good. There's hope. You're willing to honestly wrestle with this. I intend to forgive them when I mature enough and I can get there, but I'm not there yet. If you refuse to forgive, I don't know what hope there is for you. Because forgiveness is what we do in the kingdom. This kingdom, right now, right here. This is how we live in the kingdom. It's about forgiveness. It's about loving God and loving your neighbor, loving your enemy, loving everyone. And if you refuse to do that, you're not living the kingdom power. And we need to talk. Let's pray. Father God, I know there's pain in this congregation. Within this congregation, there's ruffled feathers and hurts. Not because I'm clairvoyant, but because these are people. And we claim to love you, and we're human, and we have things get in our way. Lord, I could be delivering this message to any congregation across the world and do the same thing. Help us to forgive. Give us that path. Give us that insight to move forward. Maybe that person isn't even on earth anymore. We still need to let go. Because that's what it is to live in your kingdom here and now. Lord, help us to move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. 672.